you look inside you can see all that crap that's in there in the coil that shouldn't be there that's all solder that's melted and shorted this out This is the alternator right here, and you can see there's a belt on it. It runs when the engine runs. So when the engine's not on, it's not rotating, it's not producing any electricity. But when it is running, it should be filling the battery back with power, with voltage or electrical pressure. So if you don't have a power probe, you could use a multimeter. You can see the power probe showing 12.8, it's rounding up. This one's showing 12.75, and it's volts, not millivolts. Um, or you can use a plug-in type that goes in the cigarette lighter, and it'll tell you the same thing. So we're showing 12.8 without it running. Fire it up, and you can hear something's not quite right. It sounds like power steering or something, and it's 12.6. It's not higher, it's lower, which means that we're draining the battery. The battery's actually going down. As we look at the instrument cluster, we can see a number of lights that are on them and zoom in on them. The battery light's on, which means it's not charging. Airbag light, emergency brake light, that one's always on, it's just indicating park. Uh, seat belt, because I'm not wearing a seat belt, and then this one's on. So you've got all of this fireworks display going on, so what does it all mean? Uh, with the power probe or with a multimeter, you can verify the battery one first and see that the alternator's not charging, it's just getting lower and lower. It's running the battery down. So bear in mind, not all alternators are gonna have all the effects that this one does. Not all bad alternators are gonna cause all the dash lights to come on. It should have the battery light come on, or if it's got a voltage needle, it should be down around 12 instead of 14 and a half, like in the middle. Uh, but when I go here, I hear the moaning sound. Here, not so much. Here, you hear it a lot. There's actually a tool that you can use. So you can listen to it here and see what that sounds like. And it usually just sounds like a, a roller bearing or something. And then when you stick it on the alternator, like I can feel it. So here, not so much. And you can smell something burning too. This has a little diaphragm in it and it's a, basically a stethoscope. Instead of having this be on your chest, it just has a rod going to it so you can pinpoint it. You can hear that thing just It sounds like Chewbacca in a bad mood. I'll leave a link for this, the power probe, and a multimeter, and a cigarette plug lighter, all that in the description so you can find them if you want. It smells like it's burning, I should probably turn it off. So this is an alternator that fits this vehicle. It's bolted in like this, that's what you'd be looking at. So you've got the pivot mount, you can see it's a lot thicker, and that'd be the pivot bolt, and then the slide clamp bolt. So this is the drive pulley, it'll have a certain number of ribs. This one I think is six ribs, six is common. As we look on the back, this is the lug and this is the plug. Uh, the lug goes straight to the battery. This is the output from the alternator. Electricity actually goes into the positive terminal and out through the negative or the ground. It's got an internal voltage regulator. That's what's going on here. And it's got this big stupid zip tie thing on it. They zip tie it on there because they really want you to read this and see this. What this paper basically says is, Hey dummy, fully to recharge the battery so that you don't ruin your alternator. And the reason why they say that is if you have a brand new alternator, it's got brushes that go onto the back underneath of here. So you've got these square brushes and they only make, and this is exaggerated so that you can see it good, but it's only making contact right here. Over time what happens is it'll wear into it and it'll make a perfect uh, contact and it's able to carry a lot of amps this way. So when you first start the vehicle, the alternator is going to try like crazy to get the voltage back up from starting the vehicle. When you start the vehicle, you use all that electrical pressure from the battery going to the starter uh, to start the car, and then that pressure is low, so it's almost like it creates an electrical vacuum. Now I'm violating physics principles like crazy left and right here by doing this, but this is the way, an easy way to understand it or look at it. It's like water pressure or vacuum or whatever. If you don't charge the battery up and your battery's dead or just barely enough to start the car, it's gonna create a huge suck on this. This spins around, by the way. Um, this is from the back side. 
But anyway, this brush is going to have a ton of load placed right here and it's going to burn it. So you're going to have a burn mark on this guy here, this brush, and then you're not going to have good uh, conduction. You're going to be like, my, my alternator's not working anymore, it's a bad alternator. Well, dummy, you didn't charge a battery up and you burned the contacts on the brand new one before it got a chance to break in. If you do it on an older one, it's got all the surface contact to bear all that amperage or all that flow, and so it's not going to burn it up. We're going to cut off the Hey You Idiot tag. It says charge your battery fully before putting it in so you don't have this problem. Let's see if we can snake it up where the reservoir was, and then come up. Ta-da! Comes out the top, you see I'll move the reservoirs out of the way. Go to the workbench and tear it up. One thing I noticed right off the bat is there's a bunch of metal flaky stuff here. That's an indicator of like a bearing failure or some other ferrous material making contact. Well, let's see what's going on inside this little hummajuma, shall we? Hear the drag more. We're gonna do these. There's our output stud. Remember the brush that I was showing you here? Well, there it is. It's right there. This thing's on fire! Anything that's in here pulled off or whatever. Here's our brushes. You see how they're broke in pretty good. Let's say this one here is out of pep and probably not making good contact. Looking down at it, it looks a little burned, but not bad. See how they're just spring loaded together though? Anyway, we got positive and negative, the rest is all insulated. There's our voltage regulator, it's just full of crud. You look at this right here, see we've got some corrosion happening on there. That probably has something to do with it. So here's some of my old stock, my old inventory. So these are brush sets for uh, starters and alternators and stuff. I think these are all starters. Here's an old voltage regulator. Here's a combination where it's got the brush is built in. You see one's longer than the other. This one I think was off of my old Dodge truck. Sometimes you you didn't have. So here's where your output goes. This is what we've been smelling. It smells like it's burning. I should turn it off. See everything's burned off of it. This is clumping up. This is getting all burned out. So this probably had poor contacting. See the expansion of the compound on it. So this would, this is our main thing that is worn out. Yeah, most of it's so serviceable. It's just right there on the back. I used to keep these and then just order parts for them. Have them on hand for common stuff like this. Have a alternator that's all rebuilt and ready to rock. These are expensive ones. This is the original Honda one, the Denso one. The Reman one's like, 180 bucks, 160 bucks. So one of these bearings is pressed in and is dragging. So you look inside, you can see all that crap that's in there in the coil. That shouldn't be there. That's all solder that's melted and shorted this out. Anyway, there's our field coil, here's our rotor. The rectifier, but well, the front bearing, you just pull out these screws and you could put the front bearing in. Um, this is a mess. This would probably have to come out and be resoldered. This is probably a good one to just replace. Anyway, you replace the bearing, replace this, um, you definitely replace the brushes and the voltage regulator. And then there's another bearing that we would need to get in here. And this guy's hot too. You see all the smear marks from where it was hitting the solder. So this one's the pressed one. That's why I couldn't get this to come off. I had to go to the other side. Yes, rebuilder's gonna hate my guts. I think the noise and the vibration was mostly the solder in the middle. That bearing seems okay. And this bearing here, it's fine too. There's just all that stuff in here just making a mess. Man, but look at all that solder in there. This thing just really crapped the bed, didn't it? See? Wonder if this rebuilder's gonna notice I've been in here, probably. Probably do the case halves next. The opposite side. So this wouldn't have been a bad rebuild if it had been done in a timely fashion and these were ordered ahead of time and then just put in. 
then we wouldn't have a melted solder mess on our field coils. Stator feel, I don't know, I screw up the names. Don't quote me on that. And you don't even know. I can make your hands clap. I can make your hands clap. It's just funny because these are not that complicated. Really. Should probably do the nitro, get the stuff ordered for the alternator on that because it's probably fixing to crap the bed. This is a vent. Just about where we can get our deposit back. We know we diagnosed it well. This is going to come off anyway, so maybe I shouldn't even tighten this down. I don't know, it'd be fun to watch somebody tear into this and see if they notice that I've been in it. 22 millimeter. Ta-da! You didn't see anything. You don't get any credit if this is torn into or disassembled, so that's why we have to put it back together. But I wanted to show you guys what's in a bad alternator. This is out of a 2001. Honda Odyssey van with a 3.5 liter. Look how shiny and nice the new one looks in there. All right, so what happens when we turn the key on now? We still get a lot of lights, but they all go out. And the door one actually works too. So all I did is change the alternator. Seat belt light, if you can't tell, park, and then airbag. Well, the airbag light, I don't know what's up with that, if I have to do the seat belt or what. The alternator's fixed and the battery light's out, and then all these open door lights, for whatever reason, those came on, they're off. So I said this should be at about 14.5 to be running good. I was way off. It's like 14.4, but nobody's perfect. Remember all the noise that was coming from this before? We go on this side, it was quieter. On this side, it was loud. So it's just all pretty quiet now. Got a letter in from Sten Thornburg. He's from the big old city of New Orleans, Louisiana. If you've ever seen the documentary Happy on Netflix, it's a great documentary, but it talks about all kinds of people that are happy, what makes them happy, and by studying healthy people, you can see what's up. And you see this uh, license plate on there. It's a sportsman's paradise. You know, there's all kind. That's one reason to be happy. But also about just spending time with family. So that's really cool. So I got two plates. I got the updated one with the USA in it. You see what they did there? I see what you did there. USA, Louisiana. Awesome. Thank you, Stan. This is like, this is the unicorn plate. This is the tough one to get, and this is even harder. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. This is Dear Brian. Thank you for sharing your positivity with the world. Best wishes to you and your family. Sincerely, Stan. Stan, you're awesome. Thank you very much. Got one from Tommy Pace from Kentucky. He hails from Baxter, Kentucky. These are the two that were supposed to be really hard to get, by the way, Louisiana and Kentucky. This is like a pretty, this is a red letter day, man. Auspicious. <laughs> I love it. How can you see that and not just smile? Thank you, Tommy. I always think of Kentucky like Kentucky Fried Chicken. It looks like a drumstick, but we're throwing Tommy in there. Check. And Louisiana is easy because it's shaped like an L. Thanks again, you two. Those are the tough ones to get. Let's go to the board. And then there were four. So we got Louisiana, Kentucky. Those are the ones that I thought I'd have the hardest time getting because those two states, you keep your plate and you don't get your new plate, you care of them and make you turn them in. Uh, we're down to Delaware, Iowa, Rhode Island, and Mississippi. Can you believe it? So the address, in case anyone's wondering, Brian's Mobile One, P.O. Box 282, Cedar Valley, Utah, 84013. Lucky 13. Bonus footage at the end.